Hi everyone, it's Kristen Solomon here, the director of Blackfish Gallery, and I'm really excited to introduce you to Jay Lamar, who is our current Fishbowl 2 artist as part of our ongoing project with Christine Miller's curatorship without form and void. So welcome, Jay. Thank you so much for having me. Great, thanks for being here. Um, well, let's get started and have you just tell us all about yourself. Tell us about your background and your art practice. We'd love to hear more about you. Yeah, um, so I actually grew up in Central California um, all the way up until halfway through my senior year. And then, then we moved to Oregon. Um, so I moved from a really, really big school to the high school in Brookings is like, I don't know, 400 or so, I don't know. Um, and it was a huge culture shock for me and it took me a long time but I did come to realize that Oregon is the best state that there is. Um, so I, I went to school. Actually, I started in Coos Bay at uh, Swak, lived in the dorms there. And then I went to RCC and then I finished my bachelor's in fine arts at SOU um, in December of 2020, which was the worst. <laughs> um, I can only imagine. <laughs> yes, it was all it was all online. And, you know, just it took me so long to get my bachelor's degree that graduating was literally just logging off of Zoom for the last time. And I was like, well, I guess that's that's that then. So anticlimactic, really. Yes, it was. Yeah. Um, but it has it has helped me land an awesome job, so I'm totally happy that I made it through. But it's been a, it's been a weird couple of years. I think we can all agree. Um, yeah. So I I have my bachelor's degree in fine arts. Um, still kind of considering whether I want whether or not I want to go and get my master's, and so I'm kind of in this transition period where I've finished sort of the, the schedule and the structured nature of art school. And I'm like, I can do anything that I want with my practice now. Um, and so I was super, super excited to be invited to participate in this show because I was in the, the post-grad show and that was cool. Um, but yeah, for this the viewers that don't know, Blackfish does every year a recent graduate show where we have, um, all the art programs around the state select students um, to be part of this exhibition every July. And Jay was part of the exhibition last year. Her works were very popular. We sold her works. It was very exciting. And yes. so we're so happy to have you back um, to be part of the window project and showing at Blackfish again. Yes, yeah, I was, I was uh, shocked to be nominated the first time and then totally ecstatic to be invited. Uh, back again and sort of uh, away from being a student. This is me as an adult artist. <laughs> um, yeah, and I'm having a lot of fun with it. Awesome. So tell us a little bit more about your art practice and what kind of art you make and what inspires you, what materials you use. Yeah, um, I think of myself mostly as a painter. I think um, I have an interest just overall in um, imagery and print in, um, I really like collage. I collect weird, uh, obscure printed media. Um, I got my hands on a copy of Life Magazine from 1945 and I'm very, very proud of it. Uh, things like that, that just sort of give us a, a window into what was you know, going on in someone's particular time. So, you know, anything where uh, representational, I certainly like painting people, um, particularly black skin is really challenging and interesting for me. Getting, you know, a formal degree um, in, in college, they, they, I certainly think they've come a long way, but, it's still a very male, white, hetero space. And so that's been really liberating to, to leave school and uh, do the research that I wanna do. 
Um, one thing too that I've kind of developed as maybe even a style over the last couple of years is that I only paint with three colors. I paint with red, yellow, and blue. Um, and it started completely out of necessity. I was just so poor in school. <laughs> I was just so broke and I was putting myself through school and you know, keeping up with all of the materials that you needed for us, I was like, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to get creative. So I just tried it. I tried just painting with the three colors and actually really liked it. Um, so that's, a, I guess, kind of my trademark right now. I think that's really cool. I think it's amazing how sometimes um, boundaries help us be more creative. You would think that not having any limits, right? Like having the whole world is our oyster kind of attitude that you would be more creative because you have more things, but that's not always the case. I think sometimes when you're really, um, stuck when you're limited, that makes you the most creative. Like we get into that creative problem solving before, we went live, Jay and I were talking about creative problem, problem solving. And so exactly that, it's like, then your mind really is forced to um, think through the restrictions and come out with even more creative things because, you know, what you can just do with three colors, what you've mm -hmm. shown us that you can just do with three colors, it's like, wow, um, that makes it even more amazing when you think about it. I didn't know that about your work. So I was like, oh, that's so interesting that I'm yeah. um, giving yourself <clears throat> that and I think it's it's necessary for all of us to to be resourceful with with what we have and just definitely we had a really great show at Blackfish just uh, last month in the back room where the artist only makes art from just whatever's around him inspired by um, uh, NASA uh, <laughs> one of the engineers from NASA who has a whole thing about like you know you just use whatever is around you. Yeah. Um, make what you have and there's less impact that way um there's waste that way Definitely. um and it's just really fascinating so mm -hmm. love it love to hear that little insight well yeah. shall we take a look at the piece that's in the window this month and you yes, can talk I'm more very about excited. it okay great yeah. i'm going to share my screen so you all can see the work so tell us the title and all about it and yeah yeah so um so the title of the work is bright black um, I really wanted to, you know, re-examine the relationship that we have with the color black and this association with nothingness or emptiness or whatever. Um, I really don't see it that way. And as a painter, definitely black is so powerful. It's what really makes things dimensional. It's what makes things feel um, real and it's something to compare other colors to. So I will note that it was supposed to, <laughs> the hands are switched. Um, so they will That's make- our bad. We, we totally okay. messed up in that way and install, install, but we'll fix it. <laughs> it happens, it happens. I just wanna say that um, because they do make a little more proportionate sense <laughs> when, they're, when they're in the right position. But um, yeah, so I had, you know, I had this black gesso canvas. Um, I, I again used my three color method on it. This is the first time that I've done the three colors over black and it produced really interesting results that way. Uh, what I found was that the, that red and blue, so like a purple color actually darker than the black gesso. So that created a weird value scale. Um, this was really challenging, I'm not gonna lie, because like the work that I submitted for uh, the grad show, post-grad show, I painted that on felt. And yes, I remember was, that. And that was all yellow and blue and red as well. Very, very bright because it was white, white felt. And so it was able to, um, the transparent paint was really strong on that. Uh, and once again, just, uh, you know, a part of the necessity felt is extremely cheap and you can get huge sheets of it <laughs> and it's portable. And it's, so I, going back to canvas was a little bit humbling. I'm not going to lie. Um, cause it handles paint completely differently. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, it's to me, it's not perfect, but I'm really happy with, um, 
the fact that you can tell the skin color of these people without using any actual brown. Mm -hmm. um, so That's really I'm, pretty amazing, you know, that you were able to create these really, really rich tones just from these three colors. Um, I love, I was just zooming in to see the details here because I really love the details of the face um, yeah. and all the different tones that you, that really make um, the expression and the character of this person. So are these based off of people that you know or, or people in magazines or just from yeah, your Yeah, so, so the left um, guy in the tie, that's uh, James Baldwin. Oh, He's awesome. A, yeah, writer. And um, I've always just been really, if you have the opportunity to see even a short interview, there's something about him that is just so just wise and charismatic and he's just extremely creative. Um, I've always been really inspired by him. So I wanted to, to include him. The, the character on the right is um, Tuvok from Star Trek. Yeah. Um, and I'm definitely a Star Trek nerd. So I, I was happy to include that, but I always do because um, Martin Luther King was a huge Star Trek fan. Because, oh, interesting. Yes, because of its potential, um, you know, effects on society to see men and women and, and other genders um, of different races and, and all different backgrounds, um, all getting the opportunity to just do their human best to, to just live up to their, their absolute capacity. Um, so the, the reason I chose these two characters in particular, though, is to sort of represent the past and the future. Hmm. Um, I would love if the future turns out the way that it does in Star Trek. That would be awesome. <laughs> so as far as I know, that's how it's going to go. And I'm just going to keep believing that. Um, so that's why I chose them. And they sort of bookend, you know, the, the Black experience. Um, the the hands have are dimensional. They are just velcroed on. I wanted them to sort of come out of the image. Um, they they're each holding a sewing needle with thread that goes all the way down to a pile of um, textiles, particularly African prints. My dad uh, is he just retired from the Navy. He was stationed in Italy and he had a bunch of uh, textiles shipped up from Africa while he was there. I fell in love with them and I was like, I'm going to keep these until I find the absolute perfect um, project for them, which happens to be this. So yeah, I'm really happy with the way that it turned out. I was a little worried it might be too small for the space, but I think black canvas is a pretty big statement. Oh, he fills it nicely. And because the colors pop so much, you know, yeah. it really, it, it fills the space really well. Um, I, I really love it. I think that it's interesting when you talk about Star Trek and Martin Luther King, because I think oftentimes our perception in society is that happened so long ago. Right. You know, that um, the civil rights movement and, and MLK and all that. And, but when you put them in the same timeline as Star Trek, you're starting to be like, my goodness, you know, yeah really not that long ago and right MLK overlapping with Star Trek is kind of crazy but yeah you know and also I believe if not the first one of the first interracial on-screen kisses was on Star Trek um this was a this was a sort of a playground for the ultimate humanist fantasy in my opinion and I, I'm just I'm so in love with it um and yeah I really wanted to show you know this idea that they're both working on the same uh, textile. Textile is just a bunch of threads woven together to make something else. And so they're both contributing to that, this pile on the ground and, and this, uh, you know, changeable thing that is the Black experience. So yeah, I had a lot of fun uh, making this work and I definitely, seeing it up, I feel good about it. <laughs> It, it feels a lot more complete. I was a little worried it would not translate, uh, but I, I think it did all right. It's, and, it's a beautiful piece. It's really well executed. And I absolutely love the analogy. I think it's really, um, 
speak volumes. I, it's good to hear this little inside track with you and hear more about it and yeah. um, what it means to you and what it represents. I think that um, what is amazing about art and has always been um, probably my favorite thing about it is how it tells our stories, you know, it really tells our stories and that art is history. Um, and it is also the thing, like you're talking about the first interracial kiss on Star Trek. I think so much of art has really changed. It has been the catalyst for social change. Yes. You know, um, there's definitely room for protests out there and all these things, but there's something about seeing a story, seeing characters, getting to know them, and mm -hmm. then you you love them and you accept them and you see their lifestyle and you're like oh i get it you know it's it's um humanizing you know mm -hmm. situation and so we can relate to it and we can relate to people um i know with um the show uh schitt's creek how um dan levy had said how many letters he got from parents that said i i was that parent that did not accept or understand until I saw this relationship come together and how beautiful it was on screen. And it's like, yeah, it's amazing how people mm -hmm. just, um, it really can change hearts and minds about what we, what society can be. Um, and I think it's a beautiful thing that artists can uh, have that vision for what they see, what they want in the world and then physically make it and put it out there. And it's a manifestation. And I think it encourages and um, shifts things yeah. into the ethos for everyone. And it's it's a really powerful thing. Yeah. Well, and obviously I'm, you know, I, I owe it to you guys that I'm able to, to share this work um, and hopefully other people see it and like it. But also, you know, if you are like me and you're just, just doing your best, <laughs> just, just getting through school or whatever you're doing, um, even with three colors of paint, it's worth just making something. And, and like you said, how art has, is this huge catalyst for social change. The art that was a catalyst for social change in, in, in the past is still so important and poignant and, and part of um, our overall culture. So if, if anybody takes anything from this work, it's make work, no matter what, even if it's bad, even if it's cheap, even if it's, I've made work on cardboard boxes, I've made it on, you know, and it's, I keep it all because it's so worth doing. Um, and I always say that making a painting is really brave. Knowing when to start and knowing when to stop really takes a <laughs> lot of uh, bravery and self-direction. So absolutely. Uh, yeah, no matter who you are, if you are remotely inspired to make work, then just do it. You might surprise yourself. <laughs> so inspiring, Jay. I love that that little pep talk to you out there that are listening. I hope that you take that to heart. Well, let us know. Tell us anything else um, that you're working on uh, now or maybe that for the future. You know, where can we keep up with you and find more of your work and what you're up to? Yeah, um, so I... I wish I was better at social media. I'm still working on it, but there is some, some work there. Um, my Instagram is uh, J Lee Lamar art. Um, I'm also still active on Facebook. I don't care that it's not cool anymore. Okay. I like being able to see what my granny made for breakfast. Aww. So I'm, I'm still on Facebook. Um, and I'm working on a website as well. Um, I'm going to continue to experiment with my limited color palette. I think I'm going to try maybe different surfaces. This was really uh, stepping outside of my comfort zone really paid off this time. So who knows? But uh, painting on fabric is really, I think, my, my true passion. There's something about the way that it absorbs the paint and whatever. So my next projects are going to be um, painting on fabric and maybe going bigger than I did for the last show. Um, so I will post uh, pictures and videos and things on my social media. Please follow if you're interested and I'm always happy to get feedback or questions or, or whatever. Fantastic. Well, thank you all for tuning in. Go follow Jay on social media so you can keep up on the awesome stuff that she's making. And um, thank you for your time and thanks for being here. Thanks so much. I appreciate it.